Welcome to Sustainable Sailing. So, we're going to try now tensioning our first Dyneema loop chain plates. So, down here, we've got a dummy chain plate backing plate. So, this will be epoxied under our deck normally, and this will be under the deck. So, so this is essentially a soft shackle in its open position. If it was being used as a soft shackle, you would open that up and put the knot through it and then you would have a loop. When they used as a soft shackle like that, all the tests show that if they've been built right with the, the buried part tapered properly, they break here when that's going around the knot mm. and that's because that's a very tight bend at that point because ours are going to be open this part will come up through and that there the will be above the deck it will have a low friction ring in it and this very light line, lighter than we will use, we haven't got the right line yet, but this very light line represents the lashing that will be used to tension between there and the shroud. Shroud will have a low friction ring that this will uh, tension through, shroud goes up there to hold the mast up. So that is a mock-up <coughs> of what our uh, chain plate system will look like. Well, the only difference is being that this will be bonded permanently to the underside of the deck. We will do a bit more rounding here. We haven't got the right sander to do that very well at the moment. And all our backing plates are larger than this. But what we need to do now is to tension it to check how our knot is tied and our splicing has been done to check that uh, um, this tightens properly and it's never going to, well, that size of knot is never going to fit through that size hole. I'm pretty confident about that. So mm. we're going to just pull this um, through here, finding somewhere we can actually get a ton of tension onto it is proving quite difficult. But this. It's the best thing we can think of for the moment. That bit welded to our boat cradle. Should give that a good pull through there. This here is actually putting more strain on the FR4 backing plate than when it's bonded to the hull because it's got a larger opening um, and it's not bonded in place. So we have that chain plate loop there hooked onto a crane scale that will measure up to one ton uh, Sealy um, pull along this can pull up to one and a half tons and then we have our second backing plate and uh, chain plate loop at that end of the boat cradle and so we are going to get tension between the two today up to one ton which should tighten the knots nicely and then long term the goal is to uh, put a, um, a block and tackle between them using Dyneema and, and low friction rings so we can load it up to about four tons. I'm just going to uh, Engage sure it. That that's fully loose so the scale will start off at zero. Zero. Yay. Well it holds eight and a half kilos. Oh, it started moving. Oh, 
Where have you got to? I've got to, this isn't quite engaging as what value? much as I would like it to. What value is it at? Um, 81. Mm, okay. The knot is tightening. Ooh. Slightly concerned about you standing there. How's the other end? That side to go nice and tight, and we, you can tell it the constructional stretch has already moved so that we can see that now. We couldn't see that before. About the other this end. one is also tightening quite nicely. I've got some some movement there, so it's clearly not quite tight. Now these are rated I think at 580 kilos um, and we've got 12 strands of it so uh, conservatively, conservatively that will go up to about 5 tonnes. Um, the reason we're doing it this way with this come along and so on is we can now do this absolutely precisely you know exactly what load we've put it on um, and so on. Um, we've seen lots of people when they've been working at uh, tensioning their Dyneema rigging to take the construction of stretch out of it and check that it's uh, strong enough they just um, put it between a tree and a truck and drive down away from the tree. You've no idea what load you've put on it if you do it that way. Here we know exactly what we have tested it to. And we also know that what we're replacing was stainless steel that had a breaking strain of I think about six tons. So if we test this to four compared to stainless steel that would have broken at six we are way above um, what we need to be um, in terms of uh, strength. So if we can get the block and tackle working well enough we'll go higher but um, We ought to look at the other end to make sure it's not, um, yeah. to make sure it's properly. So we're up to just nearly 300 kilos now. Does it look like no it's... No sign of the knot slipping at all. It's tightening itself up beautifully. Oh, this one's, this is a nicer knot. We've done that yes. one better. I did wonder if they were the best two or just a random two. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's oh, it's something's happening. Oh, something's happened. What's that? What happened? Oh, um, no, can't see anything. Something th happened. It was a noise. I think it was just the knot slipping oh. into a more tight place, which is exactly why we want to do this. Yeah. And um, when we looked at other testing where they've used a, a, an electric winch and whacked it up straight to full braking strain, um, they've got lower braking for the soft shackles than if you load it up gradually a few times. Yeah. So I'll link to a video where they showed that in a test. So it's really quite important for our um, system that we allow time for the knots to settle as we uh, put more tension on. So we should expect to, to hear some grunting and so on from them as oh, we do. It's a bit scary. Oh, I can see, yeah. I can see it moving, Dave. I can see the the, the uh, friction ring is pulling out. Pulling out, yeah, yeah as you're that's pulling. That's the constructional stretch coming out of it. And we're up to half oh, a ton. I'm a bit worried about you there if it breaks, I have to say. Yeah. 650. I think maybe we should stop there and see how it's doing. If I stand out here, mm, that would be safer. Marginally. Five.
if the knot is not very good then it might go sooner but it's still shrinking at this end 800 can you i want to go and look at the other knot now let's go down the other end see how it's doing oh it's a bit wet down this end <laughs> Okay, let's have a look at this end then when you're... This one is definitely not as good. It's interesting, it's dropped down. So obviously it, the dynema somewhere in the system is stretching slightly. Yeah. Um, as you would expect. When you leave it, when you and take... And when you leave it, the tension's slowly going down. Yeah. Ah. Mm, it's holding anyway. Right. Doesn't, doesn't look any different. That's a ton. Oh wow! I'm going to come. I'm going to pass it to you because I can't ton get across the puddle of weight. Oh, no. And so that there, the low friction ring and so on. That knot, the uh, FR4 holding beautifully, and this knot has actually really started to to properly get itself tight and let's just have a look just to prove oh, oh it's yes. it's dropped down to just under 900 now so we'll leave it for a little while there again that's your low friction ring essentially that's what you might think of as the chain plate that's what you're going to tension your rig to that's the knot, huge knot. There's no way that could ever pull through a 20 millimeter hole. And providing that hole is nicely rounded, it's not going to uh, wear through with chafe or anything like that. Um, and we are looking at various bits of chafe protection we can put on it anyway. So that's all holding up beautifully. Our only remaining thing is that once we install all of this, we will essentially put a removable box covering that, which it will catch any water that seeps through from the deck. As everything from here is all going to be properly epoxied, we don't need to worry about water soaking into anything. If it drips down the shroud, comes inside the, the weave and drips out here, we will simply catch it. Saying now, down to down, 850. Down more, the camera. Oh, one click takes it over a ton. Yep, it's back on again. 1000 kilos. Wow, there we go. Right, let's uh, stop the camera now and uh, say that we've uh, completed the test. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up.